Wakey Wake, smell those eggs and bake. It's time for Breakfast Talk, a podcast covering a range of entrepreneurial and independent comics creation topics first thing in the morning. Of course, please like and share if you're enjoying our special seasoning. And be sure to subscribe to join us every Monday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central. Let's talk. All right. So we have MJ. Uh, Hello. Sh- she's a uh, main character in Spider-Man, if you didn't know that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she's, got, she's got the red hair to match. Yep. Look at that. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. So, can't do math. That's a you know, <laughs> very important character trait. I so, can sit in odd positions on couches. <laughs> Hey, she's got a Kickstarter it's, still going. You could, on? You, could yeah. you could build an Instagram platform off odd positions on a couch. I mean, come on. I probably could. I'm not that yeah. flexible, but I could at least try. <laughs> so we're gonna uh, talk about your Kickstarter and like other stuff. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, Go for it. Yeah. Let's, so um, I have a Kickstarter currently running. I'm a uh, first of all. I'm a purveyor of fine fantasy comics and tragic shenanigans, level 16 marker wizard. And uh, I have a few ongoing series. I earlier this year kickstarted my Ottoman Empire fantasy wizard story, The Alchemist of Aurelia. Uh, and now I'm back with my longer ongoing series, Black Ball, which is a 1920s magical murder mystery full of shenanigans of all kinds. And uh, Kickstarter, I found out today, is not running to the third, is running to the fourth. So you do have an extra day to jump on board. Um, and we're, yeah, we're, issue three, we're kickstarting and reprints of issue one and two, so you can grab the whole, the whole series. Where specifically can we find you? I'm sorry. I just want to be uh, very direct. Absolutely. Uh, I actually have all my links. I'm going to pop them in the Facebook comments below, Excellent. but Excellent. the uh, Kickstarter is at blackball.melissajmassey.com. Perfect. Awesome. I, we're friends already. I love alchemy. I love the... Um, <laughs> old world it? feel and in comics and just like i, I read um uh the alchemist as, as like a youngling and, and it was something that kind of changed my life in perspective um so i definitely love that that whole feeling of it what was your inspiration to create these pieces of work um it kind of comes from a bunch of places but a lot of my stories start with well there's a this thing that's missing and i want this thing to exist um so why don't i just make it yeah um, solving a problem I, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, I love a lot of different eras of art history and like history in general. Um, I'm a total nerd about like the Byzantine Empire. That's one of my favorite nice. art history periods. Yeah. Um, and like that Turkey whole like Mediterranean area. Um, there's just so much cool stuff there. Uh, so that was where Alchemist of Aurelia came from. It's like, yeah, let's let's do this. Let's slap a fantasy story on it, you know? Yeah, I, I love that like desert born like culture kind of oh, like yeah. fantasy novels that kind of stuff i love it i love it Continue. oh yeah Abs- absolutely uh, no, no, no. That. <laughs> <laughs> no 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 feel free to interrupt me anytime uh i'm, I'm just here for the the good chatting um <laughs> well now i know why your instagram is that so <laughs> All right. I don't know what that means, but all right. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Byzantine. Oh, Byzantine. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's I um my name was taken on Instagram, so I took um actually an old screen name I used to use back when I was fresh out of college and like woohoo, you know how you are when you're in your twenties, <laughs> early twenties, and um so Byzantine was my art history love stuff. Uh, Tifosi is the Italian word that refers to fans of the Ferrari Formula One team. So the Tifosi are out in full force. It means all the Ferrari fans are there. Uh, And I love the Ferrari team. Uh, We just actually were watching some racing earlier, Uh, you know, being incredibly disappointed as usual this year. So, (laughs) Uh, so yeah, that's where all that came from. But yeah, and then uh, Black Ball was, Actually, I came up with that story. It was at a time where I was almost going to quit comics. I'd been working on this story and like no one wanted this story. No one wanted this comic. And I came off of a hard convention weekend where like someone was just real nasty to me about it. And I was like, oh, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a comic and it's going to be really concise and I'm, it's not going to be an opus. I'm going to finish it three to five years from now. All right, what's concise? Murder mystery, done. Someone gets murdered, find the murderer, easy. 
Um, and it just kind of kept evolving from there. Like, what would be fun to do a murder mystery in? Because the murder mystery has kind of been done over and over. Um, and it just came from having lots of conversations with people like, oh, the 1920s would be fun to do a murder mystery in. Uh, let's make it even more fun. Ah, like you have these two arguing factions. You have arcane scientists who do all the magic and, you know, all the woo stuff, the fun stuff. And then um, you have the, the practical scientists who cover more of like uh, physics, chemistry, biology, mechanics, engineering, uh, the things we're more familiar with in our world. So I'm like, oh, it's an alternate timeline. You know, you have magic people and science people and they're fighting. And then America's like, nope, we're not doing the magic anymore. This is bad. World War One happened. People were blowing each other up with magic. No, we're done. Stop it. Uh, Amendment 18 kicks in. Magic is outlawed. And there you go. Perfect backdrop for a murder mystery, drama, intrigue, all that. So that's how that. that came. I love that historical bend. And like, you know, it has that magic feel because i mean even even hitler believed in like occultism and, and stuff like that so he believed in the power of magic and, and that's something that's drawn from reality at a certain you know point in history so i i love that that kind of it's building so upon that stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 it's like that <laughs> what, what hellboy was you know arisen from that kind of like belief uh in, in the metaphysical even at that point in time where there was technology and things like that so yeah i love that 1920s era feel and i totally understand what you're going for here and that's, that's is awesome it music to your ears it is it is it's music to my ears um what other what other ones do you have go ahead and just rattle them off oh geez yeah and then uh the one no one wanted that was my uh uh it was called vatican assassins it was a web comic i did for a long time uh if you've seen it around um but it was basically i wanted epic fights in churches the series that's like growing up watching anime the best scenes are epic fights in churches like someone's thrown through a stained glass window they're being thrown <laughs> off a balcony like pews are going flying like yes as someone who is catholic like that is my like yes let's do this that was, like when, that was like when your knees and shins are hurting so much you're like i need to get out of this place i need to take myself to a mental different place totally yeah. understand i grew up catholic so i understand <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so um, <laughs> that was that was like the whole was just my guilty pleasures all like crowbarred into a series. Like, yeah, oh, they're fighting demons and crap. Yeah, the, the, uh, it was just kind of like everything was crowbarred in. It was very like um, just kind of not all over the place. It was very controlled writing wise, but it just was so hard to market because religious people didn't like it, obviously, because right. it was teenagers being teenagers in the daytime and then fighting demons at night and getting maimed and thrown all over the place and blood and that, no one they didn't like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then and then people who would normally read comics, they didn't like it because they thought it was religious. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Right. Like, it's just, it's just mysticism. It's like supernatural where they're like, oh, this is, yeah. this you know, it's, it, kinda, you know, it, it just didn't go like, well. How did Warrior Nun even like ascend to that like level that it's at now, right? I it's, know. It's a, it's a great idea. And that's exactly what you're talking about. It's like that like middle ground between where people take it seriously and don't, you know? Um, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Something to strike a chord. <laughs> yeah. Or like just have hitting that middle ground of where you can get across like it's for flavor. Like it's like when people use the Greek gods for flavor. Like it's like exactly. that. Like don't get yep. too hung up on it. Yeah. It's just a genre thing. It's not like an actual thing. Like I believe oh, yeah, in yeah. all these things. <laughs> yeah. So yes. what was your what was your main focus when you uh like how did you get into comics and then what was your main focus like going into comics, continuing into comics? Yeah, um, I actually didn't like comics as a little kid uh, because it was you. all, I know, I'm the worst. Uh, I just couldn't, Great. I know, this is where I get kicked off the show. Bye, everyone. Thanks, well, it's, not, it's time to think the music. <laughs> uh, no, I actually really quick, got... really quick, Melissa. Sorry to interrupt, but if you don't know, um, Dylan is just like name. He's just shooting off like various like idioms. phrases, idioms, like famous <laughs> idioms. So just you know, take his stuff with a grain of salt. Continue. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. I think I think Hector here is just a little green with envy. <laughs> As you can drink, tell by my you face, can drink every single time he says. As you can tell by my face, I'm very green right now. <laughs> I thought you were just under the weather. <laughs> I'm under something. I'm under some kind of influence, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. You get off more than you can chew by coming on here. 
<laughs> yeah, so oh, I don't know what I'm walking into, but uh, apparently the guy before me was a dime a dozen, so you know. <laughs> you're, you're, walk, you're walking into a bus off. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I just did it. I just did it. Uh, so, you know, I've I've lived through a life of pharmaceutical advertising and working in nonprofits, so like nothing surprises me anymore. It's just like, all right, this is happening. This is oh, okay, we're going to pop up in a pop up. That's fine. Like, okay, however you want to build it, then. Oh, you, you have, want you, you, you have want the perfect to adaptation to the situation. <laughs> yeah, let's. I forget something happened at my day job. I'm a UX designer in, in advertising and marketing, and oh, wow. we work on some big clients. And one of my clients just came back to me with the wackiest request, and I'm like, you know, I'm not even surprised anymore. Oh, they were complaining <laughs> the typography was too consistent, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm not. Nah. I'm not even surprised. Like this is just, just my life. This is yeah. just how this goes. Ninety-eight <laughs> percent of everybody else wants consistency, but. <laughs> 0.5 percent that doesn't want it. <laughs> yes, yes. No, but okay. So back to the point. What, what, what push you in comics, and then what? Okay. what well, yeah. Now, now that I've revealed that I'm a disgrace and didn't like comics as a child, <laughs> um, I actually I loved cartoon shows as a child, like seven or eight. I watched so many different cartoons. Like I, I very distinctly remember Transformers Beast Wars being one of my jams Dude, as an eight year old. Yes. yes. Um, and just kind of anything that was on TV, I got really big into Pokemon and, and Sailor Moon at the time. And, you know, just that ended up into me watching all the Toonami shows and yes. oh, just kind of everything. Um, <laughs> so I guess we're all sitting in the same, like, room, basically watching the same shit as we grew up. Like, that's oh, yeah. perfect. <laughs> right. you, should be, you, you should just be part of Breakfast Talk, I think. That will work out perfectly. I mean, yeah, if you want me, I'll come on anytime. <laughs> I need, I'm an extrovert. I need friends, you know? Yes. <laughs> oh. I need I people to talk to. My husband's getting tired of being being like, did you say that? No. Uh, but yeah, um, so as a, as a kid, like I loved cartoons, but you can't animate when you're eight or, you know, you don't have those skills. So um, I just started doing these really loose, you could kind of call them comics in my notebooks at school, especially during math, because, you know, who needs that? <laughs> and um, and uh, yeah, it just kind of kept going from there. And I wasn't really serious about it. I wasn't a particularly good artist as a kid, you know, like some kids you grow up with and they like can draw everything and I couldn't really draw anything. And I just kind of stuck with it. And then um, I started reading manga when I was like 12. I got my first uh, manga trade book and I was like, this makes so much sense to me. Like this is, Japanese. I always... I was always telling stories and like, this is the way that makes sense. Like, this is how I can see it in my head and put it on paper and yeah. have it be like, it's, it's moving almost. You and, know? And do, you, do you agree that? Yeah. It's, it's kind of like the in between of comics and animation where it has more like sequential sequentials. Like it, it literally, like it fills in the gaps a little more than like comic books do. Yeah, and the way, like, you know, you have all these different panel layouts and just everything's kind of looser and, and more, you know, free form. Yeah. Uh, I, re kind of... I remember reading somewhere that manga is actually kind of plotted and, and developed more almost as if it's a film. And right. then they take the key moments and place them in. And, like, that makes so much sense to me as someone who loves seeing that motion and that movement in art. Yeah, yeah. I was saying that it, it's kind of like... Um... What's it called? Uh, like the reason why anime, like, like they they're talking during all the fight scenes because like in a manga, like yeah, they show like every punch and kick, and if exactly. you just go 150 panels of punches and kicks, you're it's going to get dry. So they have to talk while they're fighting. Exactly. Like, like, that's why all the anime is like you see, they're like it's like why don't you just fight? Like why are you talking? You're making this fight last like two years longer than. No, but it, and, and if you look at like a manga, right, like. Where, where in like a normal comic page, like an American comic page, you'll see like punch to then like another scene. Like in a manga, it's like punch, punch, punch. Like there's talking and then there's like, you know, there's like story going on as you're doing this whole fight scene. But it's like as a normal comic, it just skips certain points. Like, like you get from A to C. You don't go from A to B to then C. It's like, you know, you just kind of skip a little bit. And I think that's where manga kind of filled in the blanks for me. And that's where I really, really love it. Because it's like a halfway point between animation and comics. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> I, I love when we get to the awkward pause. I love that. It gives me a chance to breathe because I always forget to breathe on these. And then I'm like, I, what do I do now? I don't have any breath. Oh, just keep talking. <laughs> well, I would love to like highlight what you're doing right now with, with, with your series. Like what's, what, what are you doing currently? What are you really, really uh, excited about and pushing forward? Yeah, uh, right now I'm actually working on finishing up issue three since a bunch of people are going to be expecting it in a couple months. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I've been working actually now in the coloring phase of the pages. So I work uh, completely on paper. Uh, I color with marker. I never really learned how to draw on the computer as of yet. Uh, that's my 2021 goal, but you know, it's for now. Um, and I've just kind of developed my coloring style over the years. Um, I have lots of markers and uh, <laughs> it, it's really developed into this unique kind of style that people recognize right away and they're really excited to see, which is new for me that people are excited to see my work, but yay. Um, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so that's, uh, I actually have a page here that I was working on today. It's about, it's almost done. So we've got, uh, you know, some well, coloring see, going on. If that was digital, we could see it on the screen right now. I know, right? Just but saying. Just just saying. Make, 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 make her screen bigger. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I have the technology. <laughs> so yeah, so this is what I've been working on today. Um, I got a whole bunch more of these pages left to do, of course. Um, but uh, some, one of the things I've been using to my advantage is doing limited color palettes because uh, I did do full color, traditional coloring in the past, Ooh. and that takes a very long time yes. and makes me very sad. So Especially traditionally. If you were doing digitally, it might not take as much time because you have that, you know, like available colors. <laughs> Whereas like in real life, you actually actually buy the colors and then use them. So yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then your marker dries out, of course, when you yeah. need it, and you have to order the refill and wait for the refill to come. And... <laughs> it's, like, oh. it's an economy. It's an economy. We were just talking about this. Yep. It is. I'm yeah, keeping the gears it. moving for the marker industry <laughs> just by myself, I'm sure. <laughs> You're bearing that weight on your own. Yeah. So uh, I'm doing I'm doing that at the moment, and I'm coming up to some really great scenes where um, shit hasn't hit the fan yet. Uh, but it is getting there, and you're starting to go, oh, no. So you're going to have to buy a lot of brown paint, is what I'm imagining. <laughs> a lot of brown. Get, get the reds out. You yeah, know. yeah, exactly. <laughs> these, these are these. It's going to be really neutral. Like, all of these panels moving forward are going to be real neutral. They're going to be action-packed, but they're going to be neutral color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and... um. Yeah, just chugging away. I just work all the time. So I just think of like, oh, yeah, I just some work and making pages here. Oh, geez. <laughs> Not sleeping much, but it's okay. <laughs> A real Woody Allen approach to it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I was, I was telling friends of mine, like, you just make comics and then you die. Like, that's the comic life right there. <laughs> there's, there's no rest in there. Anywhere. No, there, there's sometimes naps. You rally yeah, for yeah. nap time naps, and then you naps. get back to it. <laughs> it's like while you're drawing, you're dreaming of napping, and while you're exactly, yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I literally go to sleep thinking about things that I want to do, like concepts and things I'm trying to work them out, and then that's how I fall asleep. That's how it works. Same here. I'm like playing them out in my head, yeah. like on the comic page, and then they say this. And then, oh, this right, right. and then before you know it, you're dreaming, and you wake up like, shit, I forgot that sentence that I was going to write down. <laughs> Damn it. And Greg's lights are on, but nobody's home. <laughs> <laughs> well, Greg is just tired. He's done. He's, he's done with this whole He's been working very weekend. hard. Yeah, he's been doing this. He's been he's... drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Dude, honestly, I I've been the I've third been, one, so I have one more, and then I have to drink the other thing. I was hoping that I would hear some weird kind of like drunken Greg like spew at at this point. It hasn't happened yet. So. I think it's because he's so exhausted that it's just true like tranquilizer. He's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me about the stream's gonna end <laughs> at seven hours. The stream's gonna end. He's just like this. <laughs> <laughs> Soon over. 2020. Just get, just get lower in the chair, like, oh. I'm going to sleep now. <laughs> it's over. It's over. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, okay, we're we're, we're at 4.20 p.m. my time. I don't know where. where 5.20 my time. 5.20. Okay. Yep. Eastern. I enjoy that, my time. That's when the only we, time zone when, that matters is Eastern. When, exactly. when am I drawing? The proper I, time. You know what? 
I, got, I have mountains. I have mountains in my time zone, so oh, has a little more weight. We have we have mountains. We have mountains. mountains. Yeah. Yeah. Appalachians we got forty six Appalachians You can yeah. hey, you can see the in the Appalachians. The Appalachians they don't count. Yeah, There's a the, lot of hillbillies up there. You know, they hey, don't we count. Have central time. Over here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're wow. central. 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 You right. know how far we we go all the way down to like South America, bro. Like, <laughs> come on now, y'all can't do that. Y'all in the ocean. We're in the ocean. ocean. Y'all yeah. like with Cuba and Puerto Rico and stuff. Come on. Lovely now. time of year to go swimming there. <laughs> For, yeah, actually, they. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, who doesn't when, like swimming in the ocean? When do I draw? What time is that? Because I have to be prepared for that. Is that like that's, six or is that? That's at, uh, I gotta look at the handy dandy notebook. Seven. Yeah, uh, that's in two Seven? hours from now. No, yeah. six for me. Six for me. Okay. Six your time. Yeah. Time. yeah, I don't I like time, time zones because like I had some people from like the UK and they're like, "What time is that?" I was like, oh, "It's gotta tough. do math right now." It's like go to Google. I work. Why did you contact me today? Use my device and go to Google. I <laughs> work for a company where they're seventeen hours ahead of me, but yeah, like they're a day ahead of me, but seven hours behind me. Now so it's like know. it's so weird to like. like New I'm Zealand. Talking to them, yeah, I'm talking to them at nine o'clock, and it's two o'clock their day, but they're a day ahead of me. So it's yeah. like super weird, but it. That's why I don't sleep. <laughs> Well, people don't think I sleep, but I have an overnight job, so that's why <laughs> I don't sleep. I sleep there. I sleep at the legit, job, but that legit doesn't matter. Greg, Greg is like my battle buddy. Like if I'm yeah. like up at two a.m., I'm like, oh, I could I could hit up Greg. It's fine. He's up. I'm up. Yeah, He's like good. anytime Matt, our friend Matt Myers, uh, messages me. The ghost He's like, of Matt you Myers. S- you mean the ghost <laughs> of Matt Myers? Yeah, the ghost. He's like, do you sleep? And I'm like, sometimes, I guess. And he's like, no. anytime I message you, you're, you're going to answer me. And I was like, yeah. Honestly, the Seer Nova boys are like the the only other people that I know that are so like sleep deprived as I am. It's it's pretty <laughs> awesome, actually. He gets to sleep, I think. I think, I think Dylan actually gets to sleep. But. No, because what happens is I, I work all day and then I feel bad and play video games with my little brother <laughs> in the home. So... Huh. So there you go. So he doesn't sleep. He just he just doesn't work 100 percent like 24 hours a day. What are you talking about? I have a Twitch account. <laughs> that is. I'm working. I'm I mean, working. Just in those Twitch streams. I mean, I mean just the, just the amount of graphic design alone you have to do to have a Twitch channel. Like, geez. Hey, dude, my buddy works for a, a streamer, and literally, I just worked on a project for a streamer. Where they're, I did their emotes for the Twitch channel. So yeah, definitely. I made it's, my it's own work. Email. It's oh working. yeah, he did. Yeah, I made little emotes for my thing. By the way, my neck, like, I it's mean, exactly your little neck thing. You want to compare my emotes to your emotes, though? Yeah. Come on now. Oh, it's you an emote me. battle. Half the day. Yeah, we're comparing emotes <laughs> wait, wait, here, wait. and that's okay. like, give, oh, give me, a, give me one of those common things that you're talking about. What are they called? What? You were doing them this whole time. What are they idioms. Called? Idioms. Give me an idiom for that. Okay. Apples to oranges. Is that an idiom? I don't know. <laughs> Listen, listen, I will destroy you with idioms until you're blue in the face. Oh. You've been doing it already. I'm, I'm red in the face. I could go. Are we about to have an idiom throwdown in the <laughs> stream here? I, because I'm, I'm living for this. I don't like anything but the kitchen sink. Oh, there you go. Oh. You'll beat me when pigs fly. <laughs> oh, there's going to be egg all over your crow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she just hybrided. She won. She won right there. She just won right there. Sorry. It feels like storming a teacup. No, I'm walking out. I'm walking away right now. I'm walking away. Look at these Look at these Storming the teacup. He's going to get another scarf. Add that onto the list of accomplishments. Made someone walk out of a live stream. He's getting another scarf because you were so cold to him. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so let's talk about your Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah. Um, first of all, don't launch in November was the lesson I learned and knew I was going to learn it and did it anyway. Yeah, but yeah. Do the screen, the screen share words. I would. Yeah. Screen share. Um, wait. Oh, I guess I can share my screen. Oh, I, huh? I can I can do it. I got it. 
it's okay. already pulled up, so I just got to, you know. Okay. Yeah, we're down in the yeah. final week where we're fully funded and we're slowly crossing that line to being more funded, which is very exciting. Um, like I said, thought I was ending on the third. Turns out I'm ending on the fourth. So you got an extra day to, to get some books uh, and get some other nice goodies. Like there is a sticker set of propaganda posters to show everyone which side you're on. It's the American way. Uh, we have a set of coasters, which I hope more people order because I have a minimum order that I have to give for those. And, uh, but the coasters are really fun. They're of different locations within the comics. So it's a couple of the different speakeasies and the spell dueling club is featured oh on those. Greg, that's what we need. We need coasters for Donkey Brew. <laughs> oh, yeah. And now's the time. Now's the time to get coasters. People love coasters, I, I think. I love coasters and koozies. I've got koozies for days. There you go. I got them all over the place. Ooh. The, the, the store that we go through, Printify, they have something like a koozie. So you can yeah. actually get those. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah. We should Maybe we need to do a, a team up of koozies and coasters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, koozie coasters. Yeah, what? so then, um, oh. yeah, you can also get, there's a bookmark that you can get in one of the lower tiers that you can also color. So it's an activity and a useful thing. Yeah, I have two original cool. pieces of art for sale at the 250 tier. Um, so each of those is a limited one off tier where you can get one or the other art piece. Uh, they sparkle, they have sparkle accents on them that I painted on. So they are very cool to see in person and very much uh, will look nice on your wall in your house. Uh, so please buy them. And uh, there's a bottle opener too. You can get a bottle opener. It's a, like a button shaped bottle opener that you can get with art on it. Uh, PDFs, you can get all three issues. Issues one and two are gonna be remastered a bit. There's some things that need to be fixed on them. Uh, so we're going to edit them up, we're going to do a fresh reprint of those. This will be the third reprinting of issue one and two. And then you're getting issue three, which is a double length issue, over 60 pages of 1920 shenanigans and tomfoolery. So. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back, guys, by the way. Sorry. Are you? Do we yeah, care, I had to recover. I had did to you recover get some ice from... for that burn? Did yeah, you? I did. I did, actually. <laughs> I, I had some ointment. <clears throat> Did you get another there. scarf? Oh, you didn't yeah, get another scarf. Yeah, yeah where's another thing? scarf? I should grab another scarf, right, and layer up because <laughs> it's really cold in here. Actually, you're gonna look like um, what's this? What's the kid's name in Christmas Story? Not Ralphie. The other kid. Can I share my screen? Randy. Randy. Look! 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 Oh! Oh! Uh oh! I didn't draw. Oh, they're not bad. Great. They're not bad. Yeah, they're not bad. I, I didn't draw them though. I took them from my brother's album artwork. He had some guy in like. Malaysia draw. Wow, oh. you're just exploiting this dude. Wow. <laughs> like, like, a colonizer, they, bro. They make these though, like the logo I made, that's mine. And then these <laughs> I made. I mean, wow. like, no. no, it it definitely is a full time job to be a Twitcher though, man. Like for oh, real. Yeah. Yeah, there's a guy that I watch on YouTube sometimes, Point Crow, and he does like Breath of the yeah. Wild stuff most of the time. And no, like, it's like he doesn't have a life make... besides that. Yeah, it's like people that underestimate YouTubers. Like, oh yeah, it's such an easy thing. Like, no, it's not. It's it's really not an easy thing, no, especially I mean, now because it's so competitive. You know, and the production quality you need to sustain a channel anymore. You know, forget yeah, it. You got to hire somebody to do that for you. Yeah, you know? I don't, don't have, have good lighting. Skills. I have like just a chandelier thing that's in my living room. Look at Breakfast Talk. It's horrible. Nobody what? nobody watches it. Nobody watches it because of the three quality. People. Yeah, you know, I mean, we we're trying to be YouTubers, but we're not that good at it yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, we're coming up. We're coming. Up. Our thumbnails have improved, I think. Oh, uh, that's, that's all you. I think. I think our SOE needs to be a little better. SEO. You know? SEO. I'm sorry. SEO. <laughs> I think he's drunk. A little bit. A little bit. He's not Dude. drunk. He's not drunk. Drink, drink two of these. Drink two of these, Greg. Well, and this see is the last feel. one that I have. Drink two dragon's milk, forty ounce. I don't. I don't drink yeah, beer. Those are serious. Well, I don't drink beer. Eleven percent so. alcohol, bro. The only 11%. beer I have, the only beer that I enjoy is like when I went with Dylan and his dad to like Vermont, and he's like, "Oh no, you like beer. You just don't like bad beer." I was like, "Oh, okay." True. <laughs> True. Yeah, everyone who says hey. they don't like beer hasn't had good craft beer. Like, there's beer, like 
There's some beers that I've had that taste like dessert. There's beers I've had that taste like a steak dinner. Go, if you have, if you have like a there, there's this like place that I mean in Illinois, there's like a business and it's called like Grow and uh, Brew and Grow. I'm sorry, and and it, they teach people how to like micro brew and stuff like that. Go and taste their beer because their beer is real fucking beer. It's not like some, you know, Coors, some Miller, some shit that's like, you know, mass produced. Like go and taste actual beer. And then you'll you'll be like, oh, okay, this is what beer actually tastes like. 